All right, good morning, everybody. We're looking at um, this senna plant. It's called senna abustifolia. And um, you see the leaves here? They are, um, they're very roundish. I mean, the, uh, they're not pointy, and so they're blunt. And uh, blunt in Latin is obusti, O-B-T-U-S-I. No, it's ab, obtusi, sorry. <laughs> obtusi so that's why it's obtusi folia and um, the senna plant uh, is the senna is the genus uh, which is in the um, Fabacea family which is which means uh, legume so this is a legume um, I'm going to um, <clears throat> talk about a few aspects of this wonderful legume. It's a uh, wild plant that grows. Uh, I was I was doing research uh, the other day, and I found it in like China, Vietnam, um, India. Australia, everywhere in the United States, half of everywhere in half of Africa, at least reported. It's probably in, it's probably just not reported in in most of the places because you see it's often um, classified as a weed that um, people want to get rid of. So. It's not like, and and it's also like in mostly in the folk folklore when it, and so the people that know about it, it's not like they uh, they run the major newspapers of the world. Now this is also um, in uh, Japan. Uh, where is it? Also, um, Yeah, anyways, my, my point is just that this is like an, another one of those international superstars. <laughs> and right now it hasn't started to seed, but it'll make some pods. It'll make some beautiful, beautiful yellow flowers and long pods with seeds in them. And you could do, and you and the seeds are, uh, are, are good to eat. I mean, you have to roast them first, and, but, um, and the leaves are good to eat. And I'm going to be in this video because I'm going to make another one later on when the pods are there and I could show you the seeds. But for this video I'm going to focus on on uh, something called Kawal. K-A-W-A-L. And Kawal is um, is a fermented food that's very high in protein and it's it's uh, eaten by many people in Sudan yeah and it's uh, it has saved many people be uh, when uh, during famine when there's a uh, when they basically they they know a lot about the wild edibles over there you know and uh, it's interesting that we find people like uh, USAID, you know, NASA, Bill Gates, and all these people, uh, Bear, Monsanto, Syngenta, telling us that the Africans, like, like they don't know how to how to sustain themselves. So, so we need to bring in the uh, GMO seeds and we need to manage their seeds their, their seed bank because they're they're irresponsible 
when in when in reality they know a lot about the the medicinal the wild medicinal herbs and plants and how to ferment uh, these plants because see we we think this is toxic uh, because there's some certain chemicals and I'll talk more about that here and these chem um, but if you ferment the leaves they're no longer toxic and if you uh, roast the seeds they're no longer toxic and the um, the kawal is actually a very high in protein and it rivals meat okay so it's like it's a meat substitute as far as nutrition goes so I mean you know what I'm saying like and they and um, and they're losing well some in some some places some villages you know because we're now growing these Monsanto GMO crops that are supposedly resistant to climate change uh, they're they've been told to do this and to these new crops and so they're moving away slowly from what their their ancestors used to do with this uh, senna plant which is also called a sickle pod coffee weed uh, in uh, in China, in, they call this Zhu uh, Ming Zi. Zhu Ming Zi. It's uh, it's this is huge in China. Uh, Chinese medicine is is as a lot of it is based on plants, you know, and uh, and this Zhu uh, Ming. Z is basically, Zhu means definitely and Ming means brightly and Z means seed and it's basically because they, um, it brightens the eyes. Now it's a very bad translation but bright, it brightens the eye because it's a, uh, it supposedly the mode of action here is like it works on the kidneys which in turn work to improve the vision and so it makes you, if you have night vision problems or other uh, eye inflammation or things like that, this plant here, when you eat it, it uh, works on your kidneys. It also, they say it's, um, it's bitter, cold, sweet, and rich, and, and so it, it uh, purges the heat. You know, Chinese medicine is not like our medicine. You know, they, they talk more about like, you know, things like uh, the, the elements, uh, fire, water, metal, uh, wind. And then they, they talk in terms of, of uh, heat, cold, hot, cold, things like that. Kind of like what they also do in, uh, in India. They have the doshas. It's, they have, our system of medicine is is really is really different <laughs> than uh, many other uh, old countries. Um, now, the leaves are um, they also work on the intestine. Okay, so they're laxative. They're they're lubricant. And this here is like ha is now being like used by the uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, they extract the alkaloids or, or the um, or sorry for the uh, laxative properties it's not the uh, the alkaloids but it's some other uh, glucosides I think they call them and they put that in uh, pills and chocolate bars and whatever whatnot and so it's uh, it's it's very lucrative it's a billion dollar industry this laxative things I don't have a uh, I'm constipation problems but people who do no, like <laughs> how painful it could be and they they will go for the laxatives yeah and this is one of the best laxatives there okay now uh, you have to take like a lot of it and um, and uh, that's why they uh, they'll concentrate the chemicals from it right if you just if you just eat the if you f eat the fermented leaves there's no problem if you roast the seeds and you make a coffee uh, there's no problem you know I mean, that's not you're not taking it in in the uh, high super concentration doses let me see here I'm going to uh, I'll, this is going to be a little bit technical but um, I, I want this video to be the ultimate video about Senna and so once you're done with this here you know 
and the part two, which I'll be treating the seeds, you'll pretty me pretty be pretty much be done with the uh, current information on the senna plant. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. So um, not only do the Chinese use this for the eyes, they also uh, um, they also know about this in uh, in Africa, like in Senegal, they also use it to treat the eyes. <clears throat> they also make a poultice. Uh, they mush up the leaves and they use it like as a, they put it on the skin to treat infections, sores, insects, bites. It also uh, has proven anti-venom. Uh, so if you get bitten by a snake, you you go for this here. It actually like say this it actually works. It's pretty efficient, and it's been demonstrated in laboratory and you know, in science. The leaves are also used for uh, worms, gingivitis, urinary tract infections, diarrhea, fever, and colds, uh, coughs. Now. Um, Here's some uh, technical uh, technical information about the uh, some of the alkaloids, some of the I mean the chemicals found in here in, in the seeds and the leaves. There's what they call anthraquinones, N-phenyl prop. I'm going to read here because I uh, N-phenyl propanol amino acids, emodine glu glucosides. Naphthopyrone glucosides, toxalbumins, phytosterols, flavonoids, and then a whole list of alkaloids that are like um, antibacterial, anti-malarial, and, and so on and so on. There's also some um, piperidin alkaloids, and uh, Piperidins are also a huge class of alco alkaloids that are used uh, in by the pharmaceutical companies and and also in folk medicine. Um, well, without they don't know it's they don't know it's like it's that chemical. They just know what plants to use that that does what. But in pharmaceutical corporations, they will extract um, the piperidin from plants because it's a central nervous system stimulator. Uh, and it affects the neurotransmitters, okay? So some piperidins, for example, like nicotine is, is one, okay? Um, all the anticonvulsants are, are based off of this. Um, the, um, they're used to, to, to create things like the um, painkillers, like uh, fentanyl, right? Uh, some drugs on the street, like PCP, are based off of this piperidin alkaloid. There are also um, now this new form of chemicals that are popping up everywhere called uh, nootropics, N-O-O tropics. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the uh, anthraquinones that are uh, found in this because this is one of the of the chemicals in here that is basically the mode of action of lots of what the the recent the recent research or recent research is coming out and they're using this um, this is what makes it laxative but it also um, has been shown in laboratory that it uh, inhibits what they call the toe aggregates which is T A U if you google toe aggregates you're going to find a lot of like uh, very sophisticated science here in biochemistry and physiology. Uh, basically, it's linked to Alzheimer and dementia. Okay, this is go. They're now creating a new class of medicines that are going to be based on things that can. Um, let me read you here what they say. Anthroquinones have been shown to inhibit the formation of toe aggregates and dissolve paired helical filaments thought to create Alzheimer's disease. Its neuroprotective attributes due to its anti-inflammatory actions in ischemic strokes and Alzheimer's disease. So it inhibits some beta secretals and cholinesterols, especially through the inhibition of, uh, this is like boring, A-H-E-E-B-C-H-E, BAC1 activities. It's also reported that the 
acetylation of the amino acid lysine in the microtubules associated protein tau prevents its ubiquitine mediated degradation resulting in tau tangles. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, um, god damn those tau tangles, huh? They cause topa topathies and then they get and then you go you become demented. <laughs> Well, I mean, whatever, whatever it is, however they want to talk about this stuff, you know, the Chinese, the Chinese, like, have known for thousands of years that you, this helps you when you get older not to go cuckoo. <laughs> uh, look at this here. You know what these guys are doing? They, uh, see, this is, uh, on this leaf, there's some small little aphids, and these guys are eating them. The wasps, they're not, uh, they don't, they, they look like be like bees, but they don't collect honey. They, they're carnivores. They eat little insects. And, uh, they're very useful in that, um, you know, they keep, they keep in check some of those smaller insects in your garden. Not that, not that I would actually, it would actually bother me because these, like, see, I got these seeds from the side of the road. Um, and I brought the seeds over here and I and I put them in this bed and and they're growing like unbelievably all across this bed uh, I also like planted many many other things in here and I, I did a video uh, two, two videos on on that but um, and These ones are much bigger than the ones that grow on the side of the road because see they're they're uh, they're quote being pampered you know by having a very nice loose soil and enough uh, nutrition because he what I did is here you can't see this unfortunately but I um when I prepared this bed I tilled the lane and then I um, I put maybe uh, five inches of wood chips and then I tilled the wood chips in the soil and then I bunched that all up into into like a raised bed like and then, um, and then I just, I put uh, all my wild edible seeds in here, okay? So uh, I'm growing the wild medicinal food slash plants. Okay, uh, some other research has shown that the, um, it also helps uh, with histamine reactions if you look about if you look on histamine uh, allergies and all that it, so it would reduce the allergies um, uh, more about the brain functions because this is very I made a video my last video was about the brain functions and um, yeah I got a little bit esoteric on you um, but um and I don't shy away from science. Some people think that because I'm, uh, I get into the more esoteric, spiritual aspects of plant medicine that I'm, I'm completely against science. No, no, I'm not against science. I just know that a lot of the science is, uh, or the science is not done properly. It's, it's being pushed into uh, very unscientific research by. Uh, investments you know invest now let's do it the um, uh, you could do a methanol extract uh, with the seeds and um, create a, and and um, purify extract some anti anti -exilitic. it reduces anxiety okay this has been shown too so and that basically just means Grind, drying the seeds, grinding them up, putting them in uh, alcohol for a certain amount of time, and then letting the alcohol evaporate. Okay, you will have extracted an alkaloid that way, and then that will be um, whatever's left in there. There's some alkaloids that help for anxiety, so they're also now using this here to make uh, anti-anxiety drugs. Okay, so there's also the uh, what they call Anthrothrombosis. Okay, it helps with that. Anthrothrombosis is basically uh, clotting of the blood in an artery, and uh, which uh, at at the site of what they call anthromatous plaques. Okay, Ugh. make a long story short. Basically, anthi, uh, 
Anthrothrombosis is a principal cause of death in the Western world because of its complications which cause heart attack, stroke, limb gangrene, and diseases including dementia. So there you go, you know. Uh, this is good for brain function, okay? And it's good for uh, bowel functions, and it's good for the kidneys, and it's good for the, uh, the liver. And finally, um, I'm going to get to the point that I'm go why I'm going to, I'm making this segment of this video is I'm going to be making kawal. It's something that I love fermented foods. And when I saw I had this plant that grows in Africa and that these, these Africans are making this amazing high protein meat substitution with this I was like well hello uh, I want a piece of the action okay. you know this is the last installment in the series on Senna and I'm being quiet here a little bit because look at the birds there's like two families of red cardinals I don't know if this video is ca catching it but there's always a lot of birds in my garden. And um, it's not surprising that because this uh, this practice that I do here of uh, sacred gardening attracts animals, <laughs> insects and everything. So in this last installment I'm going to show you what the Senna looks like after um, in winter basically just after winter here just so I could show the seed pods and the final growth stage of the plant in its life cycle you gotta um, if you really want to build a relationship with a plant you have to see it um, through its entire life cycle from birth to flowering to production of seeds and then to the seeds producing offspring that's the um, that's fitness so here are the pods and let's see if I could uh, with one hand it's a bit difficult sometimes to show you the seeds in it Oop. Okay, so there's a seed. Let me try it. I won't move too much. They're very small. They're hard. And, um, let me see. Um, here's the pod. So in this pod, there's like, I don't know, maybe uh, 10, 10 seeds, 10, 15 seeds. Here's like one, two, three, four seeds here. So, these seeds here um, are said to be toxic, and it's only because they, um, it's a question of dosage really, but I mean, if you take too many of these seeds, you will have some uh, digestion problems. That's why the, um, the government is so adamant at uh, classifying this here as a toxic nuisance. Just like all the other wild edibles and medicinal plants, <laughs> they're all on the noxious, invasive, toxic enemy list. Um, and it's not random, so... <laughs> so anyways, this, um, these seeds here, basically, if you roast them in the oven, they lose that toxicity. Which means it's probably not an alkaloid most alkaloids um, are somewhat resistant to heat so um, anyways um, and once you roast them you could then grind them in your coffee grinder and use it as a uh, alternative to coffee and so um, with all the medicinal properties that I've described already probably you know I, I haven't looked at the difference between the leaves and the seeds but um, this is um, 
here's the interesting story is that it's this is called Senna and um, I'm old enough to remember oh, look at this here I just got some really nice some really nice seats here I'm old enough to remember that um, it's not focusing so well is it when I was young I guess in the 70s and or 80s they came out with a uh, all those instant coffee like the uh, Folgers Maxwell House and they had this one called Seneca and um, for me it was just names you know I didn't know what it meant but the Seneca my research when I was doing research on this here it shows that the Seneca was uh, the name of that instant coffee was taken from this Senna plant because it says that they were um, adding some of the um, roasted senna grinded seeds in their coffee to dilute it probably because it costs less money and this is what they're doing with the uh, chicory here down south um, it's big I mean people love their chicory blended coffee um, I like chicory on its own I don't mind it when it's blended in coffee, but when I have a coffee, I like I like to, the coffee experience, you know, the 100% like dark roast coffee experience, where I pour over and. But anyways, um, so Seneca, Senna, coffee weed, coffee plant. This is it. This is the plant. All right. So this is this pretty much puts an end to the um, to the video on. Uh, the part one video I guess on Senna uh, the part two should be about how to process the leaves and make a uh, ferment that is very popular in Sudan Africa and now here in southern Mississippi USA bye bye